In the original series of Star Trek, there was an episode. It was called originally The Cage, but it later uh, became The Menagerie, in which a horribly mutilated um, and severely disabled uh, Starfleet officer, Captain Christopher Pike, um, who actually had perfectly uh, uh, workable mental faculties, uh, was shipped off to planet Talos, I believe, where he would spend the rest of his days in a state of blissful illusion, where he would be young, handsome, and have 24-7 ready access to a uh, blonde babe, who actually was herself severely maimed and disabled. But in their illusion, they were both young and beautiful, and he was going to have a very happy life till the end of his days. Um, the implication is, though, that he knew that this was going to happen. It wasn't like the um, moment in um, in the Matrix, the original Matrix movie, where the guy sort of says, okay, I want to have my memory wiped out, I want to be reinserted into the Matrix, and forget about ever learning that any of this was fake, and I want to have a very good life once I get in there. Um, this guy was deliberately choosing to have his knowledge of the illusion that's being perpetrated um, taken away. In other words, he would no longer know that this was an illusion, which is central to the difference between the two. In the Star Trek, the original series one, uh, Captain Pike um, would know that it was an illusion, but it was still preferable, uh, infinitely preferable, to being wheelchair-bound and stuck in a completely useless body for the rest of his life. Um, <clears throat> And one could uh, even say that it was not just better than being stuck there, that it almost might, might be as good as having a regular life. Now, the central point here is, is it possible to believe in something while at the same time not believing in it? Or to work with something, while at the, or go with something, while at the same time doubting its ultimate veracity, I guess. I would say yes it is, because we do that all the time. We have to do it, because we don't. there's so little that we understand about our surroundings. We already do this. We already do live in more or less an illusion. Um, is it insane to consciously accept an illusion, um, knowing all the while after you've accepted it that it's still an illusion? I accept this as a reality, even though I know that it is not real. Now, one could say that that is some sort of Orwellian doublethink, um, where, you know, you're just deliberately screwing up your own head, but I'd say that not necessarily it depends on the impetus behind it, because, for example, we know that this is a, a, a possible thing. Um, we know that this is, that it is entirely possible to both believe in something and disbelieve it at the same time. Um, children do this all the time. Do you remember when you were playing with your toys and you suddenly realized at a certain age that you weren't getting the same thing out of them anymore? Like they didn't seem to be doing it for you anymore. You knew before this happened that, like in my case, it was little toy soldiers, these little airfix British uh, imported toy soldiers. And you know, I knew in advance that these weren't real, that the battles that me and my friends fought with these things weren't real. Um, but I was able to consciously suspend this, and I knew that nobody was being killed, but that didn't detract from how realistic it all seemed in my mind. So I both, I simultaneously believed in it, and I didn't believe in it. Or, I didn't believe in it, but I suspended my disbelief, consciously. And you seem to lose that capacity with the onset of adolescence or adulthood or whatever. Um, so it is possible to do this. Um, people like Zopfe seem to say that it's actually natural for us to do this. That's his anchoring or his sublimation again. He's saying that uh, this is what we more or less have to do. It's the only way we can actually face what reality uh, awaits us. Now, if he's advocating this, I don't know if he, one could say that he is advocating this, but if, if we are going to say that it is possible what does that actually do to the ultimate nature of our reality, our value? 
rather than having it made for us, we are making it. Um, even if we know that nothing is fundamentally changed, we have still sort of, through the power of our own projection, I guess, placed more, more reality onto it than there might otherwise have been. And we have that capacity. It's just how real do we want to accept these deliberately self-perpetrated illusions to be to us? How real was Captain Christopher Pike's illusion? He knew it was an illusion, but he wanted to live that way. And you were left hanging at the end of the episode that he's going to have a pretty darn good life for the rest, however long it, it, it lasts, although it's all going to be fake. He's still going to be sitting there in that wheelchair, maimed and crippled and scarred and blind and everything. So, what... As I said in the in the in previous video to this, we're not quite sure what sanity is um, because we have no real objective yardstick with which to measure it. Um, so we can't really determine what the opposite of sanity is. Um, what is illusion, and what is reality? Um, and within the parameters that we even set ourselves, let's say that we fundamentally define reality, we work with it, we understand it, and we accept it. Can we then mold it our, in our own way? I would say that yes, we can. And it's somewhat lunatic, insane, not to do that. When we're living in what could easily be portrayed as a pretty miserable state in this you know, veil of tears we call reality. And there's a way that is ready to hand to deal with that veil of tears. What would prevent us from availing ourselves of this avenue of at least making reality more comfortable to deal with? We know that we can shape reality, even in spite of the fact that nothing fundamentally changes. Our, per our perception of it can be fundamentally changed. Given the fact that we don't really know what reality actually is, we only have our qualia to go by, um, I would say that um, our perceptions of reality are probably more important than the reality itself because we can only perceive reality through our perceptions. That's pretty tautological, but I think I know what I think people know what I'm saying. Um, is a sweet dream just a dream? <laughs>